Annabel Westman. I'm a textile historian and consultant and a member or trustee of the Stowe House Preservation Trust. I'm also a member of the Interior Working Group and currently am involved in a very exciting project in the redecoration of the State Dining Room. It used to be called the State Gallery in the 1740s when it was first um, envisaged, but um, by the early 19th century it became known as the State Dining Room. What is clear then from correspondence of survives is that the room was fairly early on intended for tapestries. Tapestries, which it is very, very interesting that tapestries are chosen. It shows the continued use in formal um, houses uh, for uh, such a, a medium on the walls. The subject chosen was the triumphs of the gods and goddesses. And again, this was a popular theme at the time. Many sets were woven. Um, and it is probably one of the most interesting and beautiful of tapestries that were produced. There were three series, uh, three sets were actually made, three different cartoons, which is the design that a tapestry weaver would use. And this is actually the second series, uh, a set of tapestry of cartoons, which were uh, designed by Jan van Orley and Augustine Copans, specifically commissioned by the Lenius family. The Lenius family, one of the great tapestry weavers working in Brussels, during the first half of the 18th century. The subjects, of course, there are lots of Olympian gods, what, what, what subjects were chosen, and there were five that were, or were, were commissioned. And in this correspondence, which I mentioned, there's so much talk about, about the thought of design, but also about the measurements too. It's possibly Daniel Lenius himself that recommended this particular set and recommended, um, with talking with Viscount Cobham, that, uh, that, that, the, that the subjects chosen were Ceres and Diana and Venus and Bacchus and Neptune. These were going to hang on the walls. And then on the windows, between the windows, there were going to be narrow panels with trophies and arms that related to the tapestries themselves. Um, there were uh, uh, borders woven, and um, at the top of each one is the, the, the Viscount Cobham arms and the borders around them. And it's possible that when these tapestries were ordered, they were not aware, the weavers were not aware that there was potentially going to be, and there, in fact there was, uh, a wooden gilded border added to them, that, which makes a slight difference to the borders themselves. If you look at early country life photographs, you will see that perhaps that some of the borders are concealed, but not the top border with the um, Cobham coat of arms. Unfortunately, or, you know, these tapestries are sold in the great sale of, of the Stone Great Sale that occurred in 1921-1922, the tapestries were all sold. But we know that three of them, three the large tapestries, uh, ones at each end of the wall and one in the middle, and the uh, some of, most of the narrow panels between the windows, were sold to a Swiss businessman. Um, and uh, he was to build a special room for them uh, adjacent to St. Charles Hall, which is a, um, a, Vence, uh, a venue. Um, in in Switzerland in the in the province of, or the district of, of Lucerne, and he bought three of them for the astronomical cost of eight thousand guineas, the most important, uh, or that, I should say, actually the most expensive item uh, that was sold. Um, but we missed three. The other two, where was Bacchus and where was Mars? Um, and so the search began. And it was pure luck that I happened to be talking to the director of uh, uh, the Royal um, Palace in Lisbon, that uh, which actually happened to have Bacchus and Mars of Bunter, wouldn't that been fortunate? But they were of a different series, a different set of cartoons, in other words, um, and uh, they were very damaged and really were not, uh, they couldn't be copied. So, but they recommended me to approach a museum in Lisbon, uh, you know, the same, same town, the same city, um, which was called the um, a little house museum called the uh, the Museum Maderos e Almeida, and no behold, I, I uh, there was hanging on the wall in the hall uh, the missing Bacchus with the Cobham coat of arms, so very recognisable, and not damaged at all. So this could be copied. So we had f f four of the five. Unfortunately, we haven't had so far the same luck with Mars, but on expert guidance, expert advice. We um, have copied one in the Ghent Museum, um, which comes from the same series. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, there are three series, and this comes from the same set. Um, and although it's slightly larger, the main composition of figures is the same. The landscape is slightly different, and of course the borders are different. But by we can easily copy the borders from the other tapestries. And so these have been photographed. 
And these five tapestries plus the uh, uh, into windows, the ultra finette, have been uh, photographed in order to digitally print them. Obviously, it would be wonderful if we could get the originals, but um, they'd be too expensive, and of course they weren't for sale. But having putting them in the medium of a, of a wipeable wallpaper in a room that is now used by the school as a dining room is probably ultimately sensible. It also won't absorb the smell of food, which is often the problem with textiles in a dining room. And by doing this, it's a major item in the in the in the in the room. We are creating a monumental uh, composition, a monumental effect, which you must see as leading from the music room to the orange damask dining uh, drawing room and into the uh, uh, into the state dining room, picking up the colours and really making an amazing impact, which was the which is what was wanted at the time.